Eighth Day of Waiting on God by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Waiting on God, strong and of good courage. Wait on the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yea, wait thou on the Lord. Psalm 27, verse 14, Revised Version. The psalmist had just said, I had fainted, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If it had not been for his faith in God, his heart had fainted. But in the confident assurance in God which faith gives, he urges himself and us to remember one thing above all, to wait upon God. Wait on the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yea, wait thou on the Lord. One of the chief needs in our waiting upon God, one of the deepest secrets of its blessedness and blessing, is a quiet, confident persuasion that it is not in vain. Courage to believe that God will hear and help. We are waiting on a God who never could disappoint his people. Be strong and of good courage. These words are frequently found in connection with some great and difficult enterprise, in prospect of the combat with the power of strong enemies and the utter insufficiency of all human strength. Is waiting on God a work so difficult that, for that too, such words are needed, be strong and let your heart take courage? Yes, indeed. The deliverance for which we often have to wait is from enemies, in presence of whom we are impotent. The blessings for which we plead are spiritual and all unseen, things impossible with men, heavenly, supernatural, divine realities. Our heart may well faint and fail. Our souls are so little accustomed to hold fellowship with God, the God on whom we wait so often appears to hide himself. We who have to wait are often tempted to fear that we do not wait aright, that our faith is too feeble, that our desire is not as upright or as earnest as it should be, that our surrender is not complete. Amid all these causes of fear or doubt, how blessed to hear the voice of God, wait on the Lord, be strong, and let thine heart take courage. Yea, wait thou on the Lord. Let nothing in heaven or earth or hell, let nothing keep thee from waiting on thy God in full assurance that it cannot be in vain. The one lesson our text teaches us is this, that when we set ourselves to wait on God, we ought beforehand to resolve that it shall be with the most confident expectation of God's meeting and blessing us. We ought to make up our minds to this, that nothing was ever so sure as that waiting on God will bring us untold and unexpected blessing. We are so accustomed to judge of God and His work in us by what we feel, that the great probability is that when we begin more to cultivate the waiting on Him, we shall be discouraged, because we do not find any special blessing from it. The message comes to us, above everything, when you wait on God, do so in the spirit of abounding hopefulness. It is God in His glory, in His power, in His love, longing to bless you that you are waiting on. If you say that you are afraid of deceiving yourself with vain hope, because you do not see or feel any warrant in your present state for such special expectations, my answer is, it is God who is the warrant for your expecting great things. Oh, do learn the lesson. You are not going to wait on yourself to see what you feel and what changes come to you. You are going to wait on God, to know first what He is, and then, after that, what He will do. The whole duty and blessedness of waiting on God has its root in this, that He is such a blessed being, full to overflowing of goodness and power and life and joy, that we, however wretched, cannot for any time come into contact with Him without that life and power secretly, silently beginning to enter into Him and blessing Him. God is love. That is the one only and all-sufficient warrant of your expectation. Love seeketh out its own. 
God's love is just his delight to impart himself and his blessedness to his children. Come, and however feeble you feel, just wait in his presence. As a feeble, sickly invalid is brought out into the sunshine to let its warmth go through him, come with all that is dark and cold in you into the sunshine of God's holy, omnipotent love, and sit and wait there with the one thought, Here I am in the sunshine of his love. As the sun does its work in the weak one who seeks its rays, God will do his work in you. Oh, do trust him fully. Wait on the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yea, wait thou on the Lord. My soul, wait thou only upon God. End of Eighth Day Ninth Day of Waiting on God by Andrew Murray This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith Waiting on God with the Heart Be strong, and let your heart take courage, all ye that wait for the Lord. Psalm 31, verse 24, Revised Version The words are nearly the same as in our last meditation but I gladly avail myself of them again to press home a much-needed lesson for all who desire to learn truly and fully what waiting on God is. The lesson is this. It is with the heart we must wait upon God. Let your heart take courage. All our waiting depends upon the state of the heart. As a man's heart is, so is he before God. We can advance no further or deeper into the holy place of God's presence to wait on Him there than our heart is prepared for it by the Holy Spirit. The message is, Let your heart take courage, all ye that wait on the Lord. The truth appears so simple that some may ask, Do not all admit this? Where is the need of insisting on it so specially? because very many Christians have no sense of the great difference between the religion of the mind and the religion of the heart, and the former is far more diligently cultivated than the latter. They know not how infinitely greater the heart is than the mind. It is in this that one of the chief causes must be sought of the feebleness of our Christian life, and it is only as this is understood that waiting on God will bring its full blessing. A text in Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5, may help to make my meaning plain. Speaking of a life in the fear and favor of God, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not upon thine own understanding. In all religion we have to use these two powers— the mind has to gather knowledge from God's word and prepare the food by which the heart with the inner life is to be nourished. But here comes in a terrible danger of our leaning to our own understanding and trusting in our apprehension of divine things. People imagine that if they are occupied with the truth, the spiritual life will as a matter of course be strengthened, and this is by no means the case. The understanding deals with conceptions and images of divine things, but it cannot reach the real life of the soul. Hence the command, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not upon thine own understanding. It is with the heart man believeth, and comes into touch with God. It is in the heart God has given his Spirit, to be there to us the presence and the power of God working in us. In all our religion, it is the heart that must trust and love and worship and obey. My mind is utterly impotent in creating or maintaining the spiritual life within me. The heart must wait on God for him to work it in me. It is in this even as in the physical life. My reason may tell me what to eat and drink and how the food nourishes me. But in the eating and feeding, my reason can do nothing. The body has its organs for that special purpose. Just so, reason may tell me what God's word says, but it can do nothing to the feeding of the soul on the bread of life. This the heart alone can do by its faith and trust in God. 
a man may be studying the nature and effects of food or sleep when he wants to eat or sleep he sets aside his thoughts and study and uses the power of eating or sleeping and so the christian needs ever when he has studied or heard god's word to cease from his thoughts to put no trust in them and to waken up his heart to open itself before god and seek the living fellowship with him this is now the blessedness of waiting upon god that i confess the impotence of all my thoughts and efforts and set myself still to bow my heart before him in holy silence and to trust him to renew and strengthen his own work in me and this is just the lesson of our text let your heart take courage all ye that wait on the lord remember the difference between knowing with the mind and believing with the heart beware of the temptation of leaning upon your understanding with its clear strong thoughts they only help you to know what the heart must get from god in themselves they are only images and shadows let your heart take courage all ye that wait on the lord present it before him as that wonderful part of your spiritual nature in which god reveals himself and by which you can know him cultivate the greatest confidence that though you cannot see into your heart god is working there by his holy spirit let the heart wait at times in perfect silence and quiet in its hidden depths god will work be sure of this and just wait on him give your whole heart with its secret workings into god's hands continually he wants the heart and takes it and as god dwells in it be strong and let your heart take courage all ye that wait on the lord my soul wait thou only upon god end of ninth day